Hello everybody, here is IT news on Hetma Software channel. In today's issue, you will see How to tame a drone Android 13 Games by Moonclock Studio The world's first browser And a speaker as thin as paper How to tame a drone A compact selfie drone named Pixie Snapchat presented a pocket-sized selfie drone they have named Pixie. The device is designed to take a amount of photos and it works with a messenger app of the same name. There is no remote control tool, so the drone follows a predefined fly path that you can select by turning the dial. Together with a removable battery, the gadget only weighs 101 grams. The manufacturer promises the battery life is enough for 7 flights of 10 to 20 seconds each. Then the battery can be replaced and the drone can fly again. Each additional battery comes at the price of 20 US dollars and the dual charging device for two batteries will cost you 15 dollars. Pixie sports a 12 megapixel camera and a memory module of 16 gigabytes to store everything it has filmed or shot. As it flies around, all data can be synced with the Snapchat app, so you can edit the pics and videos later and then share them with others. The device takes off from your palm and then starts following your movements and film them or take pictures. To finish the flight, just put your hand forward and the drone will land onto your palm. With this easy-to-use control method, there is no remote control option and the flight process is fully automated. The basic configuration with one battery and a USB-C cable for charging costs 230 US dollars. If you want an advanced configuration with two batteries and a special charger, you'll have to pay 250 US dollars. The first beta for Android 13 Google has released the first beta version for Android 13, its mobile operating system. At the moment, the test build is only available for Pixel smartphones. By now, the update is stated to have only a few new features and most changes are a kind of facelifting. And here is what has changed so far. In the media player, the timeline showing how far a song has progressed is now animated, and the part of the song which has already played is shown in a wavy line. Google claims that such approach helps users estimate the playback time at a glance. The clipboard has improved. Now the user interface lets you control which text was copied and from which of your applications. In the same menu, you can edit the copied text in the clipboard before pasting. Smart home controls are now accessible without having to unlock your phone first. There are 16 dynamic color themes for the operating system that you can choose from. The system notification icon has been redesigned. And in the silent mode, they have brought back vibrations and haptics. The first beta should be followed with three other test builds before August 2022. After that, we should expect a final release. Game developers from Moonclock Studio released a new squash them all game, Death to Enemies. The player has to bomb the enemy armor, which is trying to escape from the famous village of Chernobyevka. The authors mock the enemies and compare them to cockroaches that need to be killed with folded newspapers, fly swishers, hammers, and slippers. Before every new wave of invaders, you are shown a mini sketch that ridicules the Russian regime and tells you about the cynical and absent nature of what's going on in Russia. The main characters are the well known leaders of the bloodthirsty state. The developers condemn Russian aggression against Ukraine and the acts of terrorism they commit against the civil population of Ukrainian cities. So they release their second game about the war against the Russian Federation. They say their games are created to collect money for the Ukrainian army and humanitarian needs and to rebuild Ukraine. Their first project was Putla Kaput. They made it to keep people's moral high and encourage them to donate for the armed forces of Ukraine. The games are designed by two indie developers from Lviv and Kharkiv, Serhii Shiraev and Denis Kupets. They entered the game industry a few years ago and before the 24th of February they were working on an adventure project. The first publicly available browser in the world On the 30th of April 1993, an internet browser called World Wide Web and its source code were released into the public domain. It was created by the famous British programmer and software developer Timothy Berners-Lee, the man behind the idea of a global network. Berners-Lee began developing the browser in the autumn of 1990 as a part of practical implementation of his plan to create a hypertext network. 
Berners-Lee was doing it with the app called Interface Builder, which worked with one of the latest operating systems of those days, Next Step, which was meant for Next computers. It was Steve Jobs' project after he left Apple. After several months of intensive work, the first release version of the browser was ready in December 1990, a few days before Christmas. With monochrome displays used in NXT computers at that time, this is how it looked. An almost modern and easy to recognize image. The news about such a promising tool as browser quickly spread in Usenet newsgroups. Other developers joined in to work on Berners-Lee's project. However, World Wide Web lost its positions quite soon and gave way to other projects. As early as 1993, Mosaic Browser came to replace it. as speaker as thin as paper. Engineers from Massachusetts Institute of Technology have developed a paper-thin loudspeaker that can make any surface become an active sound source. It plays audio with minimal distortion while using only a small percentage of the energy required by a traditional loudspeaker. The engineers say that this loudspeaker, which is the size of a human palm, can generate sound regardless of what surface it is put onto. The loudspeaker design is built on a combination of plastic spacers and piezoelectric material. On a thin layer of such piezoelectric material, there are tiny domes which vibrate individually. These domes, each only a few hair widths across, are surrounded by spacer layers on the top and bottom of the film that protect them from the mounting surface while still enabling them to vibrate freely. The loudspeaker only needs 100 mW of power per square meter of its area. The sound level reaches 66 dB at 25 volts of power and the rate of 1 kHz. That is, with a relatively low energy consumption, the speaker can reach the conversational level of sound. If the frequency is increased to 10 kHz, uh, the sound pressure level rises to 86 dB, which is about the volume level of city traffic. The loudspeaker can provide active noise cancellation in noisy environments, such as an airplane cockpit. If it generates sound of the same amplitude but with the opposite phase, an effect can be achieved when the two sounds, the sound of the engines and the sound of the speaker, just cancel each other out. The device could also be used for immersive entertainment, for example by providing three-dimensional audio in a theater or theme park ride. Being lightweight and needing such a small amount of power to work, the loudspeaker is good for mobile gadgets whose battery life is always limited. And that is all for now. Hit the like button, post a comment if you wish, and see you soon. Hello, friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. While you're watching this video, civilians in Ukraine are dying from attacks and bombardments on the Russian Federation. Putin's insane regime has attacked a peaceful country in the very heart of Europe. Support the Ukrainian army by making a contribution to the fund Come Back Alive. Use the QR code or the link below the video to transfer any amount of money that will boost Ukrainian resistance and help it counter Russia's dishonorable invasion.